Should I keep my hair behind my ears? No. <laughs> I've tried to film this like three times already, so uh, here we are everyone. Hey guys, what's up? It's Kinsey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Kinsey. I normally make really normal videos, like they're not like this at all. Do a lot of vlogs and like lifestyle stuff and I'm going out with something cool on Thursday. Stay tuned for Thursday. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how I do my devotions, my morning reading. I never plan on doing this video, but so many people have asked me a billion times, and it's something that has made such a huge impact on my life and just like my day to day. I'm just gonna film it today, but if you guys don't believe what I believe, that's so okay. Believe in a God who's like super accepting and loving of everyone. I don't care like your like what your religion is, where you come from, like race, sexuality, literally do not care at all. I love all of you guys the same. That's it, all I have to say. So, I um, hope you guys enjoy this video. If you guys don't believe what I believe in, um, normal videos are coming literally right after this. I promise you it's not all gonna be like this at all. But um, yeah, if you guys are interested, just keep watching. So the first thing I get asked a ton of the time is a ton of the time. That sounds so weird. I don't know what that means. A lot of the time, how to make time for your devotions. I really live by the rule that we don't have time to not have time. It has become such a huge part of my life, way bigger than I ever thought it would be um, because I put it in my life. You have to be intentional. You have to make time for it. You have time for what you want to make time for. No one is too busy for this. You can always wake up a little bit earlier. I know that people's schedules get crazy. There are definitely days that I miss. Like I am not perfect at this by any means, but my days that I do it are so much better than the days that I don't do it. So again, we just like, we don't have time to not have time. If you guys have to wake up an hour earlier, do that. That's what I do. Um, nighttime. It works different for everyone. Like, I think some people do better at night and some people do better in the morning. It's so chill. Even in the middle of the day. I don't know. It can be any time. But I do better in the morning. Um, I wake up. I go to my kitchen. I make some coffee. I do those cute like, Instagram stories that my dad says are too blurry and he hates them. But on the 8mm app, by the way. Um, super cute. I love those. So I'll do that. Um, <laughs> talking about my devotion, and here we are on my Instagram. My Instagram is Kinsey Elizabeth, by the way. Um, I post more stuff about this on there if you guys are interested, though. Then I make my breakfast, and I go back to my room. I normally wake up around like 6, 6.30 to do this, though, and I will say waking up early and doing this has really also made a huge difference. I love being up in the morning, but I'm also a morning person, so it so depends on you. Just pick a time when you want to do it and make it a routine. You don't want this to become a routine to you. like. When you go into this and you're like looking for God, you're going to find God and you're going to get so much more out of it. Like if you're looking for Jesus, it's going to stick. If you're just kind of like reading through it, like it's whatever, you know, like you're not coming expectant. So like, it's just probably not going to be as crazy. Who knows? It still might be, but don't let it become a routine, but I'm super for making it into your routine, like making it a routine. There are days that I don't want to do it and I still do it. And the more you do it, the more you want to do it. So I think it's super important, even on days that you don't want to do it, to do it and make it a routine, but don't make it a routine. That probably doesn't make sense, but if you get it, you get it. You know what I'm saying? I'm so sorry, everyone. So what is a devotion and what do you do in a devotion? And a devotion is basically just like time that you spend with God. Um, so I guess that's my answer for that. I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, um, and then what to do in a devotion. There's so many things that you guys can do. A lot of people just pray. That's Awesome one in my accident. house. Uh, we <laughs> love Jesus on this channel. <laughs> you know, my character is still developing. You know, there's there's <laughs> things that we all can learn. I love uh, all of us. <laughs> yeah. Even my roommates can make noise when I film. Have to remember that. Okay, but anyways, what to do in devotion? There are so many things you can do. You can watch a sermon on YouTube. You can, which by the way, Zoe, my church, it's spelled Zoe. But it's Zoe. It's very important that you know that. Uh, but Zoe just means abundant life in the in the Bible. That's why it's named that. So we have a YouTube channel and we also have a podcast. So the sermons each week are on the YouTube channel and the podcast. If you guys are in LA, definitely check it out. But if you're not and you're looking to like listen to something, my pastor Chad Beach is amazing. So I would definitely check that out. Also, Judah Smith is amazing. Carl Lentz is amazing. Love Tim Timberlake. 
Um, yeah, there's just so many people, and the more you find, the more you're going to find through that. Um, with that being said, though, I'm super for the local church. I think finding a church is so important for, like, community, for growing in your faith, for growing as a person. There's safety in the house. Like, I am so for the local church. That's, like, my like where my heart is. So, with that being said, um, sermons and podcasts are really awesome, but also, like, find a church. But for devotions and stuff... That's cool. There's also devotional books, so they can lead you in a devotion. So if you guys like, like I like more structure too. So that's helpful. Um, I also will just read random books throughout it as well. So two that I could um, just kind of recommend to you off the bat, Uninvited, so good. Present Over Perfect, so good, guys. Two of the best books ever. Uninvited t- sells itself short by the title and like the, the cover. There's so much more to that book than just dealing with like insecurity. Like that's not really not necessarily like something I would have read about, but like it has made, it, it, like I learned so much from that book. I'm like leading a Devo group and we're reading it again because it's so good. And then also, I always listen to music. So typically like what my devotions look like is I normally will have this cool Christian music playlist playing. My friend Dylan made. Guys, this playlist is so good. It is like normal music. It does not sound like it's like, you're like in the Bible Belt, going to college, everyone's wearing like chocos and you're listening to like Elevation. That's awesome, but like that's just not my vibe. You know what I'm saying? Like this playlist is amazing. Also, I love Elevation. It's nothing bad for that. I actually listen to Elevation too. But um, yeah, if you want music that just kind of sounds more like music that you listen to on like your everyday life, check it out. I'll have that link down below. Um, Dylan's also a pastor actually in Dallas, so check that out. But yeah, it is like literally the best the best playlist ever. I list, I have it on loop all day, every day, pretty much. With that being said though, I think um, if you're looking for God, you also the Bible is a really good thing to do. Um, my director in school is always like really weak theology, is like podcast and sermon theology, like strong theology is like reading your Bible. And he's super for like podcasts and like uh, videos, sermons, whatever I just said. Like that's super awesome, but also at the same time, like making your own, reading it for yourself, like you will, if you're looking for God, like you will find him in there. So I think that's super important as well. Also, with that being said, for people who are really unfamiliar and have heard like crazy things about the Bible, reading the Bible in context is so important. When you read it and it sounds crazy, it's because at the time that made sense. So there's so many stories that have been taken out of context and used against people, which you're not supposed to do anyways, it doesn't matter. Um, but so many things have been taken out of context that like make it look bad and that just like literally is not right. So reading it in context is really helpful. That just means reading it and knowing what was going on at the time. So it makes more sense. Um, yeah, I do all of these. Like I really switch off all the time. So I can't really tell you exactly what I do because it changes from day to day. I'm going to wait for this plane to pass. Oh yeah. I hope they're on the way to Jerusalem or something. (laughs) Gosh. Oh. Any day now. It's like doing loops around. I house. know, I know. How to read the Bible. This is something that is super overwhelming. It was really super overwhelming for me. I didn't grow up in a family that like went to church all the time by any means. Um, I went for a little bit when I was like younger. I was like super involved when I started going for a few years and then I like fell away and now I'm like back, obviously. But yeah, that was super overwhelming for me because I was like, how do I read this? It's like very, very confusing. So, it can be really overwhelming. It's super weird. Like, this book can be, like, really crazy. And you're like, what does this even mean? Um, I promise it makes sense. (laughs) It just sounds, like, crazy. There is this tool that they've taught us, like, in school and whatever on how to read it. And they teach us, like, other places. It's pretty popular. But it's called SOAP. So, it's an acronym. S stands for scripture. O stands for observation. A stands for application. And then P stands for prayer. So, let's say you are reading the book of John. Like, you're going to read, like, five chapters out of John, and the verse that stands out to you is John 3.16. I'm so original today, really, I am. If I did John 3.16, the soap would be John 3.16, or the S would be John 3.16, O would be what you observe from that verse, and when you do it in a group of people, it's so cool because everyone takes something different from it, and everyone learns something different from it, so it's cool to, like, share your soaps with someone else because, like, you learn things, and you pick up on things that maybe, like, they wouldn't have or you didn't or whatever. Um, application is how you're going to apply it to your life. P is how you, prayer is how, like, your prayer for, over that verse, for your life. Books of the Bible, if you're new to this, that I recommend reading, will be the gospel. So that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, that's just a pretty good place to start because that's Jesus' life on earth. But also, you have things like Proverbs. Proverbs is good because there's 31 Proverbs. So, like, people will be like, oh, what's your proverb of the day or whatever. So if it's August 8th, 
read like Proverbs chapter 8. That's helpful. It's just like really, really short. If you're reading the Bible, it can be overwhelming and it can be weird, but it can also be awesome. If you're like looking for Jesus, you're going to find Jesus. That's what this is about. That, I don't know, my pastor told me that and he was like, you just, you have to be reading and looking for Jesus and then things will stick because it's super easy to like read and then just like read through it and just like not really pay attention. Soap is something that has made me get so much more out of Bible reading than ever before. I was never necessarily like really good at it and I would not say that I'm good at it now by any means, but soap has made a huge difference for me and I'm a big fan. I get questions about my Bible all the time, where it's from, yada, yada, yada. So I've actually answered this a ton of times, but people ask all the time because I'll post things on like Instagram stories or whatever and then people will ask what it's from. My Bible is the Message Remix Bible. The Message Translation is awesome especially for people our age because it, it puts it in something like it's not like king james version like king james version is really old if you guys are not familiar by the way there's different translations of the bible they all mean the same thing they're just put into different words that make you understand it better and get the same thing out of it so like what new like king james version of the bible is the same as like the message or like the passion translation or whatever translation it is but it's just like finding a translation that works for you I love the message. It's that is really it for my devotion. Um, kind of like Bible morning reading. I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, if you guys don't believe what I believe, that is so okay. I love you guys all. If you guys do these, let me know if you guys are new to this or whatever and I need to cover some more things, I can like answer in the comments down below. If you guys start to do some and you post Instagrams, like tag me in them or something. I want to see. If you guys have any book recommendations or anything like that, let me know. Also, if you guys do devotions and you guys have more tips, Leave them in the comments down below. I love you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Um, we'll be back to normal, regular schedule programming in like a few days. Love you guys so much and I will see you soon. Bye!